as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star 10 on a touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to ms bhumika nayar from the am capital thank you and over to you ma'am thank you ko uh good morning everyone and welcome to the q1 fi24 earnings call of thermax limited uh we have the management today being represented by mr ashish bhandari managing director and ceo mr rajendran arunachalam group cfo and executive vice president at this point i'll hand over the floor to mr ashish bhandari for his opening remarks post which we'll open up the floor for q and a over to you sir all right um very good morning to everyone on the call welcome to the q1 earnings results for uh, thermax um so my first few reflections first i think um, just on um, what were our our numbers like i would say from a profitability perspective um we did okay in in couple of our segments but uh, uh, i thought we should have done better on profitability in um, in industrial infra and i do expect and uh, that the rest of the year will go uh, better than what we have done um, from from a uh, orders perspective look uh, decent performance uh, most cases we did not do as much as i would have liked in chemicals because if you're looking to make that as a long term growth driver the volume growth has to come as well and uh, that we did not see to the extent that i would like and we'll talk a bit more about it uh, during during the discussion otherwise a fairly uh, stable quarter from an operating environment perspective i've been saying uh that uh, that our overall inquiry pipeline is decent that reflected in some of the larger orders uh larger orders look that was multi segmented which also had shared previously uh, commodity prices were stable not too up not too down uh, which meant our our capability to deliver was also somewhat predictable and overall from an execution perspective also uh, quite a manageable quarter some areas where uh, there are ups and downs and all but they were most relative to what we go through or we went through even a year ago a much more benign uh, operating environment yes yeah? so that part was good um, in terms of kind of i know one of the big questions will be on on the reserve that we have taken in the exceptional item i will actually repeat the words that uh, that we put out in the press release and i will not be sharing anything beyond the words that we have already shared uh, and the words that we put in the press release go something like during the quarter the company received an arbitrarial award against the company for repair payment of damages etc for breakdown of third party gas turbo generators gtgs for a customer project as per the award the company was directed to repair and reinstate the gtgs under the defect liability obligation further among other matters the award also allowed the customers claim on additional expenditure along with interest which is currently estimated at 245 crores pursuant to independent legal opinion for the quarter ended june 30 2023 the company has made a provision of rupees 50.63 crores and for the balance amount no provision has been considered necessary b the company is in the process of filing an application before the bombay high court for setting aside the entire said award and is reasonably confident of the issue being ultimately decided in its favor okay so with that as the background given uh, most of you follow thermax quite closely i'll just open it up for questions um, and not spend any more time giving a commentary which uh, which you guys are already fairly familiar with thank you sir we will now begin the question and answer session 
Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yes. Good morning, sir, and thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is, sir, how do you think about the large trending opportunities coming up in second half, especially from the refinery or lignite to methanol? How that opportunity is looking at this point of time? Okay. So the question is specifically on large opportunities and the outlook. Yes. Let's say for large opportunities, um, as I look at the next couple of quarters also, not too much in play in the refining space. At least uh, nothing that is of the order of 5,000 to 1,000 crores. Yeah, sub 500 crores, we do have a few opportunities. Uh, sub 500 crores, uh, even beyond refining, in uh, steel in particular, but also some other uh, areas, including a couple of international projects, uh, there is a reasonable pipeline. Um, of the sub, of the greater than 500 projects, I would say for the whole year itself, there would be maybe less than five projects that we are bidding on, and many of those projects may not get decided in the year. Uh, some of them uh, may not even go through based on customer funding, etc., because they're somewhat complicated and then vulnerability. So overall, continue to be less sanguine on uh, the larger orders, uh, but there is enough of a pipeline of uh, uh, good medium-sized projects across the board. Certainly nothing big on the refining side uh, that would be worth uh, talking about, even in the bidding side. My second question is, how do you think about the industrial product portfolio? Where do you think uh, there could be large attraction over the next uh, 12 to 24 months? Uh, something like Emotron, if you can just you know comment on the same. I would say every portion of industrial uh, products has got some uh, tailwinds which are uh, relevant. Yeah, and these tailwinds are driven by all the mega trends that India itself is going through. Yes, yeah, so first is um, just the strength of the overall Indian economy where uh, multiple industries are coming into India. And so many of those industries uh, require the solutions that industrial products provide, yeah? whether it be heating, water, wastewater, pollution control, environmental uh, pollution control, and cooling solutions as well. That is second, where we have been somewhat uh, more successful is where there is a connect with green as well. Yeah, so multi-fuel firing in the water side, ZLD, zero liquid discharge, which is uh, based on ME, MVR technology, a uh, variety of uh, tough to treat uh, uh, solutions and applications uh, in pollution control as the application gets complicated and environmental norms get more and more stringent. Um, some of the connect back into uh, being able to provide these solutions, all of it is very important and relevant and interesting. Uh, third, I would say organization by itself um, is also for our water business in particular um, and, and kind of as there is more requirement that industries do not uh, pollute the waters back um, similarly, as cities uh, have cleaner air, so some of the equipment and, and the capabilities that we have developed, that they all work through. On top of this, we are focusing a lot on digital solutions, services, so to create a very strong backbone in industrial products, make sure that we're doing cross-sell across our products, working well with our digital, with our distributors, our channel partners, so a lot of incremental stuff 
but i think on the industrial products we can continue to find some of these newer things that make us better and better for for at least um, um, a few quarters more yeah and this is a thank you and all the best thank you thank you before we take the next question a reminder to all participants you may press star and one to ask a question our next question is from the line of is bhumika nayar from dm capital please go ahead with your question ma'am yes sir um sir uh, you know of late in the news there's been a lot of talk about the omcs uh, starting to invest and raising funds into capex and uh, you know investing a lot in terms of capex uh now while there might not be some near term visibility of these kind projects as yet when do you think that this will start coming into ordering activity where we could start participating does it happen within this year or do you think it's more like a two three year kind of an opportunity i think uh, refining in particular goes in cycles i think every omc as you know has got a very robust capex plan so right now there are no new plans coming because hrrl just went through namaligarh just finished and uh, cpcl has got some pipeline but it's more brownfield activity and uh, no uh, no like greenfield kind of a mega project but uh, i am confident that in coming years uh, uh, there will be those projects and uh, and some of the private players also are looking at uh, petrochemical large scale investments etc uh, no particular timing to offer but if you're looking at a 3 year cycle oh for sure the finding cycle will will come back well before the 3 year period yes yeah? sure so my other question is on the green solutions um, you know if you could just give an update on uh, you know couple of the projects that we are working on in fepl and also in terms of total and if i look at the quarter numbers there's been some uptick in revenues as also margins uh, so how should we see the sustaining as we move ahead in the rest of the year as also for the next uh, um, in the next one or two years i think uh, see green uh, solution should be relatively speaking one of our most predictable parts of thermax yeah because um, once you once you have the asset in play then at least the cash profile is um, relatively well understood for the most part yeah there are some moving parts especially uh, relating to execution for total the, the execution is primarily around uh making sure that biomass is available in sufficient quantity and our plant is running with the uptime that we have committed to the customer in fpl it is driven by completely by uptime and making sure that uh the panels and the wind turbines all operate to the performance uh, that we have committed as part of uh, our commitment to the customer and as part of the um the the overall equity plan so let me take the two businesses first fpl we just finished in this quarter itself um 45 megawatt plus which was our largest project uh, till date in gujarat uh, solar wind hybrid and i think we did a good job in executing this yeah and compared to uh, the industry we executed this faster on time um and reasonably happy with how the team went about it yeah so now we have one project in tamil nadu one project in maharashtra and the biggest project uh, that so far which is uh, 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 which is uh, gujarat up and running so with these three we have 70 megawatts plus in play and our next project which is 120 megawatts for tamil nadu that is in advanced stages of execution going through um through lot of work on on the ground uh, mostly on schedule yeah i don't see any major red flags in executing this and this is also wind and solar uh, hybrid after that we have approved next stage projects for uh, tamil nadu maharashtra and um and uh, uh gujarat again and we are now also actively looking at ists which is interstate uh, plays as well working with customers in other states to whom we can provide this renewable energy on a um on an ists basis which means 
wind could be any part of india solar could be any part of india and the customer could be in a third part of india and we can still pull it together and then looking at storage and some of the other things as well uh total we are continuing to be on the growth track adding capabilities adding more projects and it's a continuous flow and pipeline uh and we have a reasonably aggressive pipeline and hope to do our biggest order book for tosil over the last few years they see yeah so tosil i mean 3 and a half years ago was a uh, less than 100 crore 80 crore business today we are at a more than 100 crore run rate per quarter and um, in within couple of years we would like to take this to 800 crores per year and and beyond uh, from a numbers perspective we continue to see good opportunities and we are now looking to take the model international as well got it sir i'll come back in the question queue thank you thank you our next question is from the line of renu bed from ifl securities please go ahead with the question yeah uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, ashish my first question is um, if we uh, hear through your commentary for last couple of quarters you were a bit uh, more cautious on the order flow pipeline especially mid and large size projects um, coming through but if you look at the current quarter and the infra business so uh, ipc has seen uh, quite a bit of uh, traction in terms of order flows probably large orders uh, from the core sectors so are you seeing has you seen a material change in terms of the pace of order finalization across standard products as well as large projects in pipeline or these were broadly an expected lines and probably second half could be a much more softer uh, period with respect to large order flows no i think uh, renu i would say um, i was never pessimistic i always said we see decent pipeline the recovery is broad based i just said we we don't see too many see year before last and even q1 of last year where we had a 500 crore plus project the year before uh, we had uh, two projects that were 1000 crore or or beyond i just don't see those size of projects yeah but overall i've always been bullish that we will have a decent year even in the last quarter when you guys really put a gun to my head to say what is the order outlook for this year i came back uh, saying that look we will be we are bullish for for this year and i continue to be reasonably optimistic that the year itself will also hold out okay yeah when it's not like i expect uh, the second half to be softer or anything like that got it uh then the presentation highlights the introduction of new waterproofing solution and some initial orders in the building and factory segment uh, if you can throw some light in terms of what kind of opportunity will this mean for thermax and which are the kind of target markets you're looking at and any increase in capacity manufacturing capacity required for these type of uh, special application chemicals um so chemicals look i'll answer this in multiple uh, ways first and chemicals we want chemicals to be a long term growth engine for thermax and in that sense as i said at the beginning i don't think we did as good a job in q1 of growing volume that said we remain committed and we see enough opportunity to continue to do new things in chemicals and we will continue to invest here yeah? we put up a new plant in the age which is now stable performing well uh, took a while to get there but it's performing well now and we are happy actually compared to some of the global plants we have managed to stabilize it relatively reasonably well yeah maybe not as aggressively as we would have liked to but but definitely uh, much better than the mean and we will continue to invest here yeah? we are going to add uh, more capacity put up a new plant in jagadia and then also look at other adjacent chemicals and all which for just for competitive reasons i cannot share but chemicals will be an area where we will continue to invest continue to to grow and continue to have aspirations that we can build this to be a much bigger more profitable business uh that is there yeah in terms of newer products that we have released i think uh, not just in for chemicals which is a more of a new application but across yeah what we are looking to do in cooling what we are looking to do in water um is to continuously introduce new products 
continue to focus on technology led innovation and not uh, rest just in the areas that we are in but look to connect to adjacencies yeah like in cooling we are now getting into and getting uh, quite good at technology relating to clcts which is closed loop cooling towers very expensive but require much less water yeah so and uh, relatively less competitive in india because it's a technology intensive space uh, heat pumps again kind of uh, most of the players on heat pumps are global nobody does it in india we're looking to do adiabatic sorry clcts is closed loop cooling towers adiabatic cooling towers is the low water based cooling towers that is also something that uh, that we are uh, we have developed we are launching uh, in water as i said Uh, uh the whole zld space tough to treat water over time i do expect desalination to become a big part of our water capability also uh we announced a partnership with uh with pax uh which also for the ethanol market provides a solution for condensate polishing which is very novel higher end technology so lot of new things that we are looking and connecting on um uh, my second question is this is look at the operating margins um this quarter in particular was a bit soft both for products and the intra segment um and if you see on a broad basis as you also um, um acknowledge that the commodities have been quite benign now um so by when do we start seeing the impact of these benign input prices um reflecting in our margins or is there still a bit of baggage from the older projects which would be on a lower margin basis which are getting executed currently so i think on the on the industrial uh, infra businesses you will see bit of an overhang yeah and in in industrial infra which are long cycle projects we tend to book our costs and confirm our costs right practically right when when the orders come in yeah so so we at least like steel which is the single biggest buy we order all the steel right then and there when when we know the project is there um and and projects such as the fgd ones which are lower profitability will stay lower profitability yeah it is uh, that said i think q1 was particularly difficult and i do expect uh, in coming quarters uh, for some of our good guys where we have some projects at higher profitability they also will start to uh, to show up and and the mix should uh, should help us give better results industrial products um um uh, look uh, there the benign uh, commodity prices is showing up already yeah and so i don't think we um we should expect too much uh, more from commodity prices themselves to help what we need to do is our in, in international businesses which continue to show up as losses and become drags on our india business the pull through that we get from additional volume into profitability we continue to do that and in heating which is the biggest driver of profitability in industrial products uh, we tend to typically release some of our reserves uh, through the year yeah so that trend we will continue to see yeah in q2 though i do think that our employee expenses will go up yeah because uh, this last cycle we have taken a much bigger uh, uh going at fixing our compensation and especially in the um, in the lower and medium ranks of the company where we had attrition where um, i think in in recent years this would be the highest compensation cycle that we have gone through and the impact of that will also start to show up in q2 so we have a few moving parts overall i think uh, i do think we can improve our profitability um, but uh, it may not be to 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 the overall extent that i too would like it to be yeah but we will improve our profitability for sure and we will improve our profitability relative to last year as well uh, for the year as a whole as well thanks much and all the best to you team thank you thank you our next question is on the line of amit anwani from prabodha sleeveder private limited please go ahead 
Uh, thanks for taking my question. I particularly want to know about uh, you know distillery being uh, I can see 10, 11 percent contributor, and in our uh, presentation we have highlighted distillery still to be a good growth driver. Uh, particularly about this FCI order for not supplying grain to distillery, uh, uh, a lot of uh, ethanol plant companies have mentioned some. Substitute or overhang on ordering coming in for for distillery. Just wanted to understand your view on that. Yeah, there will be. We are seeing some cases of order slowdowns and and people that were uh, very very uh, bullishly wanting to place orders now kind of wanting to be little slower. Um, so compared to to the very aggressive nature that we have seen for uh, six months now, some amount of consciousness. Uh, I do think it is um, it does not. Some of the better, well capitalized players will continue to move forward. Um, uh, but uh, uh, but the but what you're talking about is some amount of cautiousness is true. All right. My second question, sir, on on uh, in your presentation, you have men mentioned about the energy transition play, and you have highlighted uh, 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 quite a few areas. So, just wanted to, uh, for example, gasification and uh, hydrogen. Just wanted to understand your perspective uh, at Thermex. Are we actually dissecting any addressable market, or is it still? some time away to get orders in this basis. And second thing, for the remaining nine months, considering that Q1 has been pretty decent with respect to intake, are we expecting to cross uh, uh, decently on the last year's order intake numbers? I think, uh, look, the simple answer to the second part is do we expect to cross last year's orders intake? Absolutely, yeah, of course we expect to. And and if we could do Q1 with uh, without getting a single big uh, order, we would like uh, uh, to continue to keep that uh, uh, single really big large order. We would like to continue to keep that uh, that moment uh, momentum. Yeah, in terms of uh, the some of the newer energy stuff, uh, bio CNG is already contributing uh, orders. Yeah, and not just this year. Last year is where we. We uh, took in a few hundred crores worth of orders on the bio CNG side. Uh, coal gasification is technology that we have developed. Uh, the government policies are imminent in terms of uh, VGF. Uh, so we do expect that to produce some amount of orders this year. Waste to energy, waste heat uh, utilization already driving fair bit of our orders. The last bit is on hydrogen. Hydrogen is much tougher to predict. Yeah, the the and I've already always said that. You don't look at hydrogen as a quarter by quarter play. Look at it as a three to five year play, which is in that period which will become meaningful. Uh, the sector continues to have a lot of announcements, and the big announcements that came about were one, um, the SECI scheme on the PLI for hydrogen is out. Uh, I do expect um, sometime this calendar year that, that uh, those bids will go in. And this financial year, I do think uh, these results will get announced as well. So which will you know, create the, the race effectively where multiple companies would be off the blocks. Yeah, we also have seen many state governments starting to come out with their policies on uh, banking, on subsidies that they would provide. Uh, the Hydrogen Valley projects are also starting to get announced where government is providing some amount of funding uh, and also the larger projects, uh, some of the private players have announced uh, financial closures. Um, so activity is starting to pick up. Uh, I don't think it will result in direct orders for us. Possibly, you know, maybe at the end of this financial year, but most likely, big, big more action will happen next financial year. And certainly, we don't know how the whole PLI, uh, how competitive it will be, uh, all that. It's too early to, to opine on any of that. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Dhananjay Bagrodia from ASA. Please go ahead, sir. Um, hi, sir. Just a couple of questions. A, you all have written about a new product launch, which has uh, got to do with waterproofing. Could you uh, give us some details around that and how are we uh, planning to work on this product? So waterproofing is part of our construction chemicals line. Um, and uh, see, we have a good product now, but you do dry scale, you need geographic presence through the year, through, through, the, through the country. Uh, you need to work with uh, more and more distributors, with more and more applicators. Uh, and today it's a small part of our business, but these are all examples where tremendous growth is possible. Yeah, it's our own homegrown technology capability, fantastic product. In the small geography that we have launched in, the launch has been fantastic. But it's a, it's part of a larger chemical story on how do you take some of these uh, uh, to a much bigger denouement, so to say. Yeah, because we don't have uh, we have very limited geographic presence. We have very limited um, work in um, presence with distributors, etc. Which to me is all opportunities for growth. Yeah, I don't look at it from a defensive point at all. Sure, sure. So, so this sir would come under your D two C, and this would be something which we would. Oh, no, no, no. We will not be B two C at all. We are completely B two B. Yeah, industrial applications, industrial sales uh, to through distributors, going to applicators, going into to all industrial kind of applications. No B two C at all. Okay, sure. And uh, so, second, now with so much spoken about around round the clock. Uh, electricity need, need. Uh, we have our capabilities we also have been speaking about how we have capabilities and uh, renewable capabilities including solar wind storage battery and hybrid solutions are uh, we seeing that much traction as some of the other players which are uh, showing great order inflows uh, are we seeing something along the same lines in this so on rtc we are not seeing order inflows currently and i would say all the order inflows that are being talked about are primarily on pumped hydro where we don't we are not putting up any pumped hydro projects nor do we have any plans to put any in the future yeah we will uh, we are looking at rtc for many applications based on batteries uh, in my view the commercial viability is getting better and better but it is not entirely there yet yeah, that said, there are multiple projects where we are uh, coating RTIC and working on RTIC or semi-RTIC. It may not be round-the-clock power, but it may be much, by use of storage, a much more stable renewable power, which means today with uh, wind and solar, with solar you can only do eight hours. With wind, depending on the season, you can only provide few more hours. Adding wind and solar, you could get to a certain number. Can you increase that number? Yeah, so, and can you, what is the lowest cost uh, uh, storage that you can bring in that fits very perfectly with the, uh, with the hybrid solution that you have put in? Clipping kind of solutions and all that, where you have clipping, can you cut down your clipping by using storage and using that storage to work? So we are playing around with storage quite a bit. RTIC in full 24 by 7, um, I think, is uh, a little further away. Yeah, pumped hydro is the only case where it's being very actively talked about, and we are not in pumped hydro. So if there is RTC or any of these projects, would we look at first putting the capex on our balance sheet and then uh, servicing clients? So how, what would be a strategy along those lines? Uh, so anything that goes through FEPL will be books on, on our own balance sheet. Yeah. Oh. And as I said previously, maybe it's a good segue on on uh, FEPL. We had said also, yeah, that there's certain amount of funding that our board has approved, which which was along the lines of the numbers that we had spoken last time as well. If the platform wants to grow faster than that, then we will look to bring an external partner in as well. Okay, and so just roughly, what what IR would an RTC in your estimate make? So in my view, it should be minimum of 15% and beyond. Yeah, we shouldn't be looking at any business which is sub 15%. Though on a project by project basis, some exceptions may happen because you estimated a project at a particular profitability ends up being lower, etc. But from an equity IRR perspective, I think most of uh, what we are looking to would be 15% uh, would be the floor. Yeah. 
and 70% decay. What? And get to equity ratio. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry, I couldn't uh, get all of your last bit. But uh, any anything else, or could we get into the next person? Yeah, sorry, I, I yeah, the line was not very clear. No one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is on the line of Lavina Quadras from Jeffries. Please go ahead with the question. Yeah. Uh, hi, Ashish. Two questions. Uh, one is. Um, on this, I remember you discussing a Japanese boiler order and the China plus one aspect. Are there any further updates over there or something you'd like to share and discuss? Secondly, you might have mentioned this earlier, I would have missed it. This 11% year on year order flow growth, is it entirely base orders? Thanks. So, uh, first part, I think, do we see the China ones, especially in the cement industry? We are seeing China uh, and even uh, other customers uh, also in this space uh, looking at the Chinese. It's unfortunate, but uh, that's reality. Um, that's the first part. Uh, second part, um, these are not all base orders because we have had uh, um, like a single order of 250 crores uh, plus. We've also had a uh, few orders that are 100 crore plus. So it's not entirely base orders, but I would expect um, in the business that we are in, this kind of activity we should be able to see on a more regular basis any which way. Okay? Maybe not a 250 crore order um, but overall, I think uh, you could say 70% of this, um, 70 to 75% would be base orders, yeah. And base order growth is in double digits? It's continuing well? Just to yeah, this on last that. quarter at least, the base order growth was double digits. And as I said, yeah, a lot of the, uh, on the industrial product side, we have had a reasonably good quarter. Um, and variety and driven entirely by the uh, India's overall economic strength, uh, uh, fair interest in kind of energy transition based solutions around fuel shift and like and, and our water and ZLD and, and uh, many of our uh, products have also done well. Okay. Ashish, lastly, just on that uh, China plus one, what I meant was, I think in the second half of last year, you had won, Thermax had won orders from a ja Japanese company, and you ah. mentioned that China plus one might become, I, I mean, it could be an opportunity, so I just yes, wanted some thoughts. Kind of on a similar line last quarter, and uh, which is now actually into Taiwan, and we are seeing a couple more projects being quoted for international um, international. So that part's a good part and, and that we are continuing to see traction on. We have the customer that we worked in, did the first one um, that went into a European country. Then we got a second order this last quarter for Taiwan. Now there are a couple more inquiries in play as well. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Manish Goel. From Thinkwise Wealth, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, uh, if you can uh, share the uh, breakup of uh, domestic and international for our revenues, revenue growth, and order book order intake. After we shifted to a new format, uh, we seem to have discontinued these data points. So, and maybe if you can provide some more commentary on the international uh, scenarios. So I think we do share, uh, we don't share this study anymore on the, I thought in the financial summary that we give out, uh, one second, uh, I have the numbers in front of me, I'm just first trying to check that we, it is not there. Um, okay, in terms of the order booking, the international numbers were down compared to uh, to last time and overall our international businesses have underperformed relative to our own expectations and actually I would say underperformed relative to last year as well. Uh, the good part is that on the larger projects which is relevant to what Lavina was speaking about, our pipeline on international is uh, one of the best I have seen in recent years. Yes, yeah, so we have a big pipeline now of larger projects on international. 
uh, which should be which should be uh, hopefully decent in terms of uh, mix right now i would say international relative to this 30 plus percent number for this last quarter was more like uh, 20% uh, 20% from an orders point of view and maybe 25% from a revenue point of view approximately okay so maybe uh, so on a on a larger project size maybe would it be possible to quantify the the quantum like uh, and in which areas particularly oh so look it's not one single project here and that would be a good thing what we call as our um, what we call as industrial infra there the pipeline on international is now a um, couple of thousand crores plus yeah when those projects will move the vulnerability all of that remains to be seen and it's not one single large project again uh, but it's uh, this couple of thousand crores plus uh, they it's a mix of waste uh, recovery waste to energy some of what uh, i was speaking on the previous person's question on on um, on just uh, pressure paths for global uh, 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 waste to energy projects uh strength from um, from our dam stoker business where we are seeing uh, uh our pipeline continuing to be strong so it's a mix of lot of different things but on the larger project side now our pipeline is both on epc and on large boilers is now couple of thousand crores plus sir so on our indonesian subsidy if you can uh, give us update how it is going so there i think um, uh, on indonesia and dam stoker both of them underperformed in q1 and i know last year i had shared that this year i would expect both businesses to be doing uh, much better um, in indonesia especially i think uh, q1 was a disappointing quarter uh, on both uh, order intake and also on profitability and on profitability as we are executing we are finding that uh, to meet what we said was uh, building a product as we had sold it we are not able to manufacture it as we had sold it to the customer so as delivered as manufactured there are cost run ups uh, which is disappointing so i would say ptti may continue to be uh, continue to underperform relative to when we finished uh, the year what my expectation was dan stoker will come back based on it has a good uh, backlog and some of the backlog is profitable it will deliver even though q1 was tougher i expected to deliver the overall year at plan or better because we know the backlog is profitable ttti um, i don't know rajendran will it be equal to or better than last year at least even if it's not equal to and starting to get into a full profitable year and um, minimum i guess it should be as well last year yeah. i think that's our uh, that should be realistic but uh, if, if we are able to catch up uh, i think in the next quarter uh, hopefully it should be better better is it yeah so that would be a summary and sir last question on the uh, cbd complex i guess you did mention that last year you got uh, good orders but are we seeing a, a pipeline improving and probably we read that couple of large corporates are also getting into the uh, uh, interested in to setting up this uh, large size cbd plant so if you can give us some perspective and we are working with all of the large projects huh? and the projects that we took last year are for those customers i think now if anything we are slowing down yeah the pipeline and the interest level is massive um we want to execute and finish a couple of these projects before we take more on yeah and i hope that these customers will also be patient because as an industry we are entering new ground a new ground on everything yeah how the what is the quality of the input feed what is the frequency of the input feed the technology who are the buyers what um you know what uh, specification do our buyers need uh what is the the role of government uh, it's all lot of moving parts so uh, so our focus is on retiring the technology risk and focusing completely on making sure that uh, that before we take in new orders we are able to address some of the uh, concerns on the projects that we have already taken and these are not concerns from the point of view of 
of uh, you know it's more like the chemical story where we said here we know we have to work through these things we just need to resolve it step by step by step and get to a place that we have a full amount of confidence so because uh, uh, the the challenge is both on like on the sourcing of the uh, uh, biomass on one side and then on the evacuation of gas itself so the ecosystem do you think that it's been developing and something it is being uh, yeah it is being developed but it's not easy yeah it is being developed and for example i'll come back and say you take something like rice straw yeah you can come back and say look i'm setting a plant for 100 tons of rice straw per day yeah, on paper it sounds good yeah but then you actually go on the ground and you see what 100 tons of rice straw looks like and you need that on a daily basis okay. then you realize the mind boggling uh, focus on what is it that we need to do then yeah. kind of uh, then you figure out that that look uh monsoons will happen we have been having lot of infrequent rain hmm. then those bales get wet so how do you process those wet bales then you see something else showing up so the supply chain is all work in progress but given that some of the biggest names are now in this space i do think their structure will come in and evolve and and this this whole space will become more and more formal going forward yeah but it's right now it's completely work in progress and it should be yeah this is what we are looking to do is unique um, and it's not like a refinery where every refinery in the world will have the same building blocks the crude gets moved around the world in some things like bio cng the problems are very unique uh, the solutions are also unique um, these are very much um, kind of domestic uh, things that we will have to figure out thank you sir sorry to interrupt mr uh, manish uh, rajin sir had a point to say yes yeah, so on this domestic international since we did a segment change uh, last quarter we had not updated it i think going ahead in the next presentation on it we will find the domestic international split as well thank you thank you sir sorry to interrupt mr manish well may we request sure. you to join the question queue for follow up questions thank you sure our next question is from the line of ashwani Sharma from ICICI Securities please go ahead yeah uh, thanks for the opportunity so our first question is is a clarification uh, i want to know are we bidding on this ekhi hydrogen project um early to say ask me in a couple of months from now and uh, uh, we'll say yeah we are definitely looking at it very very closely okay So my second question is: uh, Are we exploring opportunities in the district cooling? Uh, if yes, then what kind of opportunity do you see in this space? Uh, see, district cooling. If it is industrial cooling based, which is electrical based uh, cooling, we are not in that space. If it is absorption chiller based and has got other technology capabilities that are needed. we are by far the leaders in that space so i suspect that we will not be having the lead in district cooling we will work with companies and create optimal solutions where our solution will be part of the overall fit that they would have okay are you Sir, seeing a lot of this cooling uh, coming about yeah there are few corporates which are kind of you know talking about district cooling nowadays so i thought uh, i'm of only one but if you see more details do share yeah i wouldn't mind uh, going deeper into this yeah because there are globally in part of district cooling like for example in nordic countries and even in the us we are big part of uh, the overall district cooling solution even though we don't take the lead we provide uh, as part of an overall cooling solution some of our technologies fit in very well i know india has been talking about it but most people i spoke with said economics don't work out and all but as more and more complexes come up especially industrial ones i do think uh, uh, this thing will will get will become more prevalent i wasn't aware that there were multiple people starting to look at executable projects i was aware of just one yeah understood sir and so lastly uh, you know in one of your strategic objectives you mentioned about growing products and services portfolio 
uh when you say growing products where do you see the gap in terms of products and which segment and also what is your strategy in terms of growing services portfolio that was my last question so i think i answered that question partly yeah see um the three big drivers for for whatever we want to do in in other mega trends for india which is we are in a place where industrial growth is good new capacity is coming up any new capacity irrespective of which industry it comes up in needs a utility needs water needs uh, some sort of steam more that is not all industries but many industries so that whole space is um, is driving uh, new inquiry pipeline for us yeah and here we are working very closely with our distributors clearing up channel conflicts uh, working channel penetration like it's it's uh, block and tackle stuff but very very important we are training our channel partners uh, doing all of that second is the entire green portfolio which is industries that have got coal as the usage uh, driver or or today have got effluent which they put out into the sea or or into whichever form and tomorrow are coming have are being looked at for zero liquid discharge how do i cut down my water usage um uh third is uh, the trend on urbanization yeah where sewage treatment becomes important um uh, waste treatment becomes important newer applications like in ethanol and all uh, desalination require newer products newer capabilities so multiple drivers that we can see of of growth yeah on cooling as i've spoken about getting into heat pump clct adiabatic cooling towers these are all newer areas and newer product capabilities that will continue to drive capability and and even on the you know heating side we launch electric boilers we are providing air pollution control and scrubbers for uh, solar and solar plants that are coming up where we solar manufacturing is coming up in india so so look a uh, lot of things on on services this is a uh, lot of focus has to go in services because when your products are doing well we tend to not focus on services services is the most profitable part of our business and we have to make sure that as our products grow we continue to grow services and in services we need to focus on uh, penetration making sure that our spare parts uh, availability and branding of spare parts we do well uh, we have to make sure that lot of value added services that we can provide to our customers in terms of fuel shift energy efficiency uptime we start to do we have a big program on on the digital front which is edge live and edge uh, where we are starting to monitor assets on a continuous basis some fantastic stories on on new insights we have been able to give to our customers in terms of asset health asset optimization which are customers and this is not for the biggest of the biggest our solutions what we want to launch is for every run of the mill textile plant rubber plant plywood plant uh, ethanol plant any one and every one yeah we want to be able to provide meaningful cost effective solutions for uh, for for our everyday customer for the uh, for the small business owner out there and and certainly increase our penetration here yeah, we had a big issue where lot of our products that got sold through our channel partners we didn't even know who was the end user how was the end user using these products so a lot of focus on just services 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 understood sir so i'll come back for more to in case thank you thank you guys uh, last set of questions yeah yes, yes sir Our next question is from the line of Parikshit Kanpal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Hi, Ashish. So my first question is of a clarification. So uh, regarding this uh, provisioning of the 50 crores, so this is for the repairs, or this is a part of the 245 crores? No, this is part of the 245 crores. Okay. And this repair will come in this second quarter, or it is already done in first quarter? It is already done. Whatever we had to do and spend, we have spent. um it still needs to finish in terms of installation etc but whatever spending etc we have to do we've already finished and closed all of that okay. what was the impact on margin or what could be that numbers to get a real sense on what the margins for this quarter be done 
Yeah, it's already done. In in fact, uh, last year and the year before, we had taken um, some of that as cost that we had taken as part of our business here. So the repair and all that is already, whatever cost impact was there is already done. Okay. This is my second question is on the pricing environment now. So one side that you have been like, technology advancing your product uh, product portfolio, the new, new technology. So are you able to extract the pricing for it? Uh, because it's still not reflecting in numbers. So do you think that like other capital good companies we have seen, there has been strong pricing and margin uptake and the benefit of operating leverage playing out. In our case, the margins have been pretty volatile. So how do you see the demand and the pricing environment for our product portfolio? Yeah, we'll start to take a look at our segments also in the four segments that we are starting to report. Yeah, and in uh, at least a couple of our segments, that leverage is starting to, has been showing up and will continue to show up. Yeah, so if you take a look at industrial products compared to last year and this year, uh, that is starting to show up. Yeah, many like our environment business used to be low single digits. Yeah, now it is starting to move into uh, higher single digits. Similarly, our water business, our heating businesses are now double digit uh, profitability as they as they as we look at an annual basis. So across the board, we are seeing uh, leverage at least on the product side. Uh, continue to go and as that uh, volume also starts to come in you can see uh, what our backlog looks like by our segment um, there is a nice story on the industrial product side which is uh, which is developing uh, chemicals also which is reasonably profitable we want to continue to grow and build on um, the challenge that we have is uh, primarily on industrial infra. We have, I would say even on industrial products, we can do better, and I do expect the team to do better. On industrial infra, some of what happens is the projects that we have taken, we have took a lot of projects a year and a half um, ago, which were almost big two years ago, yeah, which are all going through execution and all that. Some of those projects were not as profitable even when we took them as we would like. Uh, but that said also, Q1 was was particularly worse, Yeah, where we had one project with significant negative profitability that also went through. I do expect the rest of the year to be better. How better? We will see quarter over quarter. But I expect the rest of the year to be uh, better, even on the industrial interest side. Okay. This is the last question for me. Uh, this F FEM and this TOEFL, so what will be the total, total equity and total debt uh, is at the end of first quarter? And what will be the balance capex for the year? Sorry, I think if you would repeat that question because we, we were breaking out completely. We couldn't hear that okay. question. It's TOEFL and FEVL and something relating to debt. TOEFL. That is all that I think. So TOSL and FEVL, so what is the total capital allocation uh, in terms of equity and debt as of the Q1 FY24 and what is the total capex to balance for the year? So I think the uh, borrowing at this time is something like uh, close to 500 crores in both the businesses uh, put together and I think on the equity side I, uh, we have uh, close to uh, uh, 250 crores of equity, uh, which is there uh, at this time uh, in uh, IPPL uh, business. And in the total business, we have committed, I think last quarter we had mentioned that we would be putting in about 65 crores of equity for uh, over and above their uh, profitability uh, for the uh, new projects that they would be uh, investing in. Um, so that's the sort of uh, numbers that I have at this time on the uh, listing. On I think the um, uh, uh, was there any more uh, that you would want to yeah. understand? So, so for rest of the nine month FI twenty four, how much is incremental capital allocation for these two? For uh, total, I told you already about that. About sixty five crores yeah. of additional equity would be there, but they would also borrow uh, for financing some of that project. Uh, the APPL one, I think uh, we would be, uh, you know, I think basis the projects that would come up, we would be further uh, investing in that entity. Uh, I think we will be able to give you an update uh, uh, in the subsequent quarters as the projects do come up. No, Okay. Thanks. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question of our question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Oh, look, no closing comments. Uh, thank you very much to everyone who attends in these calls and follows Thermax. Uh, we much appreciate uh, your time and and your insightful questions. If there's any feedback on from you on things where you would like to see uh, more details from Thermax, et cetera, do write to us. We'll consider that as like the international point that came out. If there were other points also, we'll look to include them in our um, in what we share with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of DAM Capital Advisors Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.